Okay, so we just finished doing a tour of the chem lab. Right? Um, our notes today aren't overly long. It's more or less common sense. But let me say this one more time to make sure this is clear. Um, I would rather spend an hour talking about safety so that I don't have to visit you in the hospital one day. Okay. Uh, this, this could potentially be the most dangerous place in the building. Um, truth be told, if a fire were to actually outbreak in the building and overtake, if my chemical room actually, like, fire got there, there are tons of things in there that are explosive. Oh, so, like, if, if one place in the building, other than maybe the boiler room, is actually going to cause a big explosion, it's totally that closet back there. So I need you guys to be wary. I need you to be safe. I need you to treat treat the stuff we do when we're doing lab work with the proper proper reverence that um, that it requires. So just like if you're working with Mr. Orr on a bandsaw or with Blair on, like, a gas stove, the same things apply here. Okay. So chemistry is a hands-on science, and I really do believe that. Give me a second, Cody. Go ahead. It's okay. I'll wait. So I really do believe that chemistry should be hands-on. I like to do a lot of hands-on activities. We're going to do three labs in this unit. And in the physics unit, I've got at least two planned. So I want to have you guys do stuff. Uh, the first lab is probably mostly going to be me doing stuff, but I want to build you guys up to the point where... Can I make sure that when I'm talking, by the way, I, I feel like this does go unsaid, but can I make sure you guys actually give me your full attention? Because I know I'm looking around and I'm seeing it's not always there. So, um, anyways, the uh, the first lab, I'm probably going to do most of the work, but by the time we do our third lab, I want it to be entirely you guys working hands on. So, um, okay, so here's a couple more rules. I've already mentioned these ones here. You always need to wear your safety glasses. Okay, no exceptions. Your eyes are valuable. Never eat. Okay. Don't bring food. I don't mind if you bring food every other day, but on next week, Monday, don't bring food along. Okay. Um, this one, I hope, goes without saying here. Don't goof around. Okay. Uh, sometimes there's like kids like to do play fighting or silly stuff like that. And normally, I don't have too much of an issue if you're not being completely reckless. But if someone's going to be walking around with a beaker, I can't all of a sudden have two kids decide to pretend to you know do something dumb, right? So just don't even go that way. Okay. It's just, it's not worth the risk. Yeah. Um, the fourth one's really important. Don't don't be afraid that I'm going to yell at you. Because first of all, I don't do that. That's not who I am. But um, report anything that goes wrong. You spill something on the table, let me know. Okay. You accidentally burn yourself a little bit, let me know. Don't just be like, I'll rub it off. Like, it's fine. Right? Like, um, let, let me know, just in case. Um, I don't want it all of a sudden to be like six hours later and you're feeling really, really, really bad all of a sudden. And your mom takes you to the hospital, they do a tox test, and they're like, you have barium poisoning. And they're like, how'd that happen? Right? Like, um, tell me, please. Okay. Uh, be careful when you walk around. And this one, I think, even goes back to what I said just a few seconds ago. Guys, when I'm talking, um, my expectation is that you're giving me your full attention. Right? Like, don't, don't be working on something else. Don't be chatting with your friend. Like, pay attention, please. So... Um, I've only had to do this a few times here, but I, I will need to kick kids out if you can't follow these. So. Okay, well, let's talk a bit more about some safety stuff. This is something that you will get assessed on. It's part of the curriculum even for your PAT. I need you guys to be aware of some of the safety symbols that go on chemicals. Um, you guys have probably seen these before in your lives, right? Oh. You guys, okay, perfect. So I'll, I'll gloss over it a bit then. Um, you know, pretty much any chemical. I mean, if you go to the store and you buy Drano, or I just bought like a spray and wash that I would put on my uh, uh, clothes before they go in the washing machine, right? Like any sort of chemical should have um, these sorts of symbols on there letting you know if they're dangerous, right? And obviously not everything is dangerous. I don't expect there to be like a, a corrosive label on chocolate milk, but there is on bleach, right? So um, hopefully you guys can kind of piece together how these work. This one's flammable. This one's toxic. This one's explosive, this one's corrosive, and all of these things in general are bad, right? So we want to avoid these. So, uh, Here's some basic rules about this. If you see a yellow triangle, that's kind of the lowest level. That's just a cautionary one. We don't need to be, you know, like, oh my goodness, never use this, but just be aware. Like a good example of this would be hairspray, right? Um, you probably are not going to just spontaneously light on fire when you're 
spraying your hair, but if you were to light a match to it, it could start a flame, right? So be aware, orange diamonds are more of a warning. And then if you see the red octagons, like these ones here, those are the, be very aware. I'm still talking. Okay. Make sure you're very aware because like, same thing as in my chemistry lab, right? If something is toxic, that is, I mean, skull and crossbones, you guys know what that means intuitively, right? So, so, okay. Um, another thing I need you guys to know are the Wemyss symbols. And these are different than the previous symbols, but there are eight Wemyss symbols currently in use. They're actually getting changed, but we're going to have to learn the old ones right now. Wemyss stands for Workplace Hazardous Materials Information System. And there are eight symbols, and I need you guys to know these ones. So here's the symbols. Uh, this is for a compressed gas, dangerously reactive, oxidizing, poisonous, flammable, biohazardous, corrosive, and this one is toxic. So um, most of these symbols, I would say, are pretty intuitive. Like when you look at the one like this, if I were to ask a kid in grade five, they probably know that skull and crossbones means poisonous. Right. But if you're not familiar with these, I need you to memorize so that you know what they are, because it's something that I will need to assess you on. Question? Perfect. OK, so this is not new then. Um, someone asked about uh, cleanup in case like we spilled a beaker on the floor. Uh, another thing I need you guys to be aware of is called a material safety data sheet, MSDS. Um, pretty much on every lab, I'm actually going to have you guys do some research where you'll have to look up one of these MSDSs, and, and they look like this. Every time I buy a chemical, I get one of these along with the chemical, and they're really easy to find online. Here, here's an example of one for this really, really dangerous chemical known as sodium chloride. Super dangerous. And I say that with absolute like sarcasm, because sodium chloride, I heard someone say it. Yeah, it's salt. So this is the MSDS for salt. Uh, you'll notice that uh, over here, there's actually like a little triangle. That has a bunch of different rankings here. Uh, salt, we're not worried about it lighting on fire, really. We're not worried about it being overly reactive. There are some health concerns if you ingest salt. Now, I'm not talking a little bit of salt, but like if you ingested a lot of salt, there could be some health concerns. But for the most part, it's one of the most safe things we could possibly use. But what this will do is it'll list literally every piece of information about the chemical you might want to know. Things like uh, where it was purchased from, the, uh, the chemical composition, hazard information, and it goes well beyond that. So I only posted like the first part of the sheet, but let me tell you some other things that we'll find on one of these sheets. It'll tell you melting and boiling points. Uh, it'll tell you whether it's toxic or not. Uh, these are some ones that I have to look up sometimes. I have to look up health effects just to see whether or not it's carcinogenic. Does anybody know what carcinogenic means? Carcinogenic. Cancer causing. There's some chemicals that are known to cause cancer. For example, um, benzene would be a good example. We used to use benzene in schools. Uh, benzene in general, I mean, no one's going around drinking a beaker of benzene or inhaling it, but research has shown that people who are exposed to it in some sort of fashion seem to have higher correlations to getting cancer. And there, so there, there are certain chemicals that are, that are known to be carcinogens, and so we don't use them anymore. So I might need to look that up and make sure that it's safe. Oh, is it something that might give off fumes that we don't want to inhale? So toxicity is important. Health effects are important. First aid, it'll actually list what to do in a first aid situation. So if you were to spill some calcium carbonate on you, I would quick look at the sheet and say, okay, well, what's the procedure for safety? Uh, same thing for what if a container spills or leaks? How do, we, how do we solve that? We don't usually worry about spills and leaks so much because when we spill, it's usually a little bit. But spill and leak information would be like, what happens if the tanker truck on the highway overturns and spills like 100 gallons of this stuff? Then what do we do? You know what I'm saying here? So anyways, these sheets here, these MSDS sheets, they look like this, only there's usually like six pages to them, has pretty much all the safety information you could ever ask for. Okay. Um, if I don't have it on hand, it takes more than just a second to Google. I want to warn you guys, the one we do labs, I'm going to ask you to look up MSDS information pretty much on every lab. That'll be one of like the questions I ask you to do. So if you have your phone and it's connected to the internet, that's pretty easy to do, or we have computer access. So be aware that these are going to be common things I need you to look at. 
Uh, here's a good example, actually. You know how this one's for salt, right? Salt is not something that when I think of that I go, I'm going to die on salt. But here there's actually toxicological, toxicological data. And it actually will like give some examples of like what it would take to actually like overdose and have like toxic effects from salt. For example, they've tested this on rats. If you were to give 3,000 milligrams of salt to a rat for every kilogram that they weigh, then it would be toxic and the rat would die from eating too much salt. Right. Now, I need you to think about that for a sec though. 3,000 milligrams is three grams of salt for every kilogram. So if you know how many kilograms you are, like, you'd literally have to eat this by the bag for that to be a problem. But it does have that information as to like how much would you have to consume before you die from taking it. So, anyways, it has the information there for like rats and mice and and dermal and stuff like that. So. Anyways, I'm getting off topic. That was my last slide, correct? This last one. Okay, it's a pretty short lesson today. There's uh there's not necessarily a lot that I need to point out because I gotta be honest, guys. Safety in the lab is common sense. Basically, if I could summarize the the lesson today, don't do dumb stuff. Okay, be smart. Keep yourself safe. Um. In 10 years of teaching, I've had two accidents I can think of. One explosion, but we were under the fume hood, so although it scared the crap out of me, let me tell you, um, everyone was safe. And uh, one time where a girl had something explode in her face. I'd like to keep my uh, the accidents in the lab basically to those two for as long as I can. So please don't be dumb. Because I want you guys to do stuff. I want you to actually be trusted working with chemicals. And, and sometimes the chemicals we need to use are toxic or poisonous because those are the ones that achieve the goal that I want. They're the ones that react in the way I want. So I trust that you guys are going to be able to follow these rules. Okay, hand over your heart. I promise. I don't know, I'm serious here. Let's do this. I promise. Uh, I promise that I can follow these rules. Okay, thank you. No, don't throw in maybes. Okay. Okay, we have a little bit of time left today. Um, in my class, this comes up quite a bit. When I do a lesson day, we don't, we don't always need, I don't need to talk at you the whole time. I mean, I don't like to talk at you as much as I need to, but I'm gonna get, we're going to have extra time left over. Okay. And tomorrow, tomorrow when we, uh, I give you guys some work time, because tomorrow's a work day, right? I want to talk about some things that you can do. My philosophy as a teacher is that I'm not going to tell you what to work on. I'm not going to say, right now, work on this. Okay? What I do is I give my students many things to work on all at once. If you were to drop into one of my physics or chemistry or math classes, kids usually have one assignment, one lab, one quiz, one worksheet, and I usually give them like five things to do. And I'll tell them different due dates in the future when they are, and I just basically I give you time and I say, you work on what you need to work on. And most kids, they usually work on the thing that has the first due date first, right? So if the lab is due first, they work on that. If the assignment is due first, they work on that. But if you're kind of used to a classroom where you just work on one thing at a time, and then after you finish thing one, you work on thing two, and then you work on thing three, I just give you a whole bunch of stuff all at once. Okay? Now, I'm only giving you two things right now. We're, we're easing our way in. But when we get a little further on in the course, you might have two different labs you're working on two different assignments you're working on, and there's a quiz coming up. And when I give you free time to work, you really need to use it. Okay. So here are the two things, and I don't care which one you pick first. You choose. Okay. I really want you guys to be responsible for your own learning. But here are the two things you can work on. I already pointed out one of them. You have a chemistry assignment. Okay. I'll give you a due date for this a little bit later, but it's probably going to be next week, Friday. So you have a lot of time. It's not like it's due right away. But... Um, my advice on assignments, do them a little at a time. I don't expect you to be able to answer questions 14 and 15 because we haven't learned that yet. But if you do a few questions every day, you'll finish it really easily. If you sit around and do nothing and just waste time on your phone and then all of a sudden try to do it at the last minute, that doesn't usually work all that well. So uh, you guys should be able to answer questions like all the way up to number, say, number seven, where I ask you about the name, shape, and color of some of the hazards. Or I ask you, what sort of WMIS symbols would you expect to find on gasoline or oxygen? So um, we've talked about most of this stuff already in class. There are some questions, though, that i got to tell you, I specifically need you guys to 
um, ask deeper questions. And I don't tell you the answers right away. Uh, we didn't talk about this one yet in class. Explain the difference between a suspension and colloid. I actually purposely left that yesterday. I don't know that anybody actually thought of that, but I need you guys to sometimes ponder it first and then maybe ask me for some more help. So make sure that you're asking me lots of questions because I will help you out on your assignments lots. But you might need to actually look this one up on the internet or in your textbook. Okay? So if you don't have a textbook, go grab those. So anyways, this is one thing you can work on. It's not due for a while, but do it little by little. Uh, the other thing that you could choose to work on, again, depends on which one you'd prefer first, is this lab safety project. And this one I'm going to give you guys a due date. I want this done by Monday. And the reason why I want it done by Monday is that Monday is when we're doing our first lab. Okay. And so I want to make sure that you guys have the basics of lab safety down. So my guess is most of you probably do this first, because it's a do first. So there's four parts to this assignment. Okay. And it's actually really easy. Here's the first part of the assignment. I want you to tell me what these eight women symbols are. How would you find that out? Or they were in our notes too. Right? So between the textbook and your notes or your phone and Google them, that should be pretty straightforward. So that's part one. Do you know your eight women symbols? Uh, part two, I've got a little comic strip here of, uh, of a classroom where their teacher clearly doesn't have the same expectations I do about lab behavior. Because as you, as you look at what's going on here, there are multiple things happening where kids are not doing what they should be doing. No. no. Like Lindsay over here, her hair is on fire. So, yeah, that's not good. And um, Evan over here looks like he's drinking chemicals. Uh, Savannah looks like she's actually drinking out of a bottle with a skull and crossbones on it. So. Go for it. Good point. All right. Anyways, here's what I need from you guys to do. Um, there are many, many things wrong in this picture. All I need for you to do, circle 10 of them and tell me why it's unsafe. Find me 10 things in here that are, that are obviously not appropriate. Okay. Part three. Um, here are some rules that are in your textbook. I basically took this directly out of the textbook. It's on page 95, by the way, in case you're looking. And I literally just took out some words. All I want for you to do is fill in the blanks. This is not a very high expectation level, right? Like I'm literally asking you to circle things in the cartoon that are wrong, fill in the blanks, and write down some stuff out of our notes. So I'm not overly challenging you so far. Uh, the last one's going to require a little bit more work. I need you guys to know where to go and what happens in case. And I've been saying this all day. This is hopefully the, the point of the day. I don't want something bad to happen. And I know sometimes we joke a little bit about it, but guys, in dead seriousness, you don't want this to happen. Okay? You don't want to have something go wrong in the in the lab because you don't want to get hurt. Okay? So, I need you guys to know where stuff is because hypothetically, you get something in your eyes, I need you to know where to go now. Because if we don't get acid out of your eyes in like 30 seconds or less, we might not be able to save them. You know what I'm saying here? So time is of the essence. So here's the activity for the last part here. It's not hard. It's more of a scavenger hunt. There are 10 things up there you guys can see. I need you to take this map of our science labs, mine and labs, and the hallways around it. And I need you to use color and a legend. You guys know what that is? Okay. And I need you to label where stuff is so that you know where it is. So here's the stuff. I need you to know where all the eyewash stations are. There are three. I need you to know where the emergency shower is. I need you to know where the fire alarms are. Just so you guys are aware, there are none in our classroom. That's not a fire alarm, actually. I'll talk about that in a sec, though. But in case something lights on fire in our classroom, if I yell, I need you to know a name here, Megan, because you're closest to the door. Megan, hit a fire alarm. I need you to know where the closest ones are. Okay. There are two that are within reasonable distance down hallways. So if you don't know where they are, just go outside the classroom in a few minutes here and go find them. Okay. Mm. I also need you to know where the fire extinguishers are. There are, again, a couple nearby in the hallways, but unfortunately, until um, they get around to it, we don't actually have a fire extinguisher in this classroom. Uh, they're hopefully working on it. But again, if I need to yell, Kimberly, because you're close to the door, get a fire extinguisher. I need you to know where it is. Okay. Uh, I already showed you where the fire blanket is, so hopefully you can label that. Uh, the fire escape route, in case it ever comes up, 
is to go out this door and basically straight down the hallway out across the field. So it's pretty easy. It's just one straight shot through this door here. Okay, this would be a good example, though, of I, I get that sometimes it's cool to be kind of flippant and joke about it, but in dead serious, please don't, okay? Right? Like, if there was a fire, that's not actually your escape, right? So. Um, okay, fume hood. Oh, sorry, I missed one. Unauthorized areas. I already kind of pointed that out. You guys shouldn't be in my back room. Fume hood, I pointed out. The emergency gas shutoff switch. We're probably not working with gas in this class here yet, but if we ever do work with gas, that would be, um, you guys ever see these things back here? This is natural gas. It's currently shut off, because this would be horrible. If we just left this sitting on for a long time, gas would just fill the room. And one spark would cause it to, you know what I'm saying here? Yeah, we don't want that. So I've, there are multiple shut off switch. I've got a main one that I've got turned off as well. But in case that one's off, that's this one right here, OK? So that one right there is the shut off switch. Does that make sense? I also have another one of those in my back room as well. But since you guys aren't supposed to be in my back room anyways, you'd never be hitting that one. But in, again, in case of emergency, Christina, hit the gas shutoff switch. I'm getting names working on here. You guys know where to find it. And then the last one is the first aid kit. Did you guys see that? I didn't point it out. It's, it's in the back there. Okay. So anyways, I need you guys to do a legend and basically tell me where all this stuff is. So if you need to go out in the hallways to find where the fire extinguishers and the fire alarms are, so you can label them on your map, you can do that in a few minutes here. But what I'm going to do now is give you guys about 20 minutes until flex time. You guys have free time. Do something productive, okay? Please don't sit on your phone and do nothing or just chat with your friends because you've got things to do. I would recommend you work on the lab um, thing first. If you haven't printed it off, grab a computer or maybe I can print a few extra ones here. Okay. Uh, or work on your assignment. Okay. Tomorrow, guys, give me one more second, okay? Tomorrow is also work time as well. So please use this productively because you're going to be quite busy. As of Monday, you're going to have another lab to do. And then there's going to be another assignment coming later. I give my kids lots of things to work on. Okay? And I really believe that's important because in the learning cycle, that's the application stage. I need you guys to do stuff so that we can help improve and get better and work on things. So, Okay, I'm done talking. You guys have about 20 minutes here. Do something. I don't care what it is, but do something productive. Print off notes. Work on your assignment. Sound good?